Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a physics 7c practice problem on the topic of the electrostatic model. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps promote this channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be working with. So we have a large particle is moving in a region with both a uniform electric field and a uniform gravitational field. The mass is 3 kilograms, the and it has a charge of negative 5 coulombs, so it's negative. The strength of the electric field is 15 newtons uh, per coulomb. The strength of the vertical gravitational field is 10 newtons per kilogram, and it's pointing straight down. Uh, the resistance between A and B is 20 centimeters. The distance, I'm sorry, is 20 centimeters, and then the distance between B and C is 15 centimeters. So the first thing that we have to solve is uh, the particle is moved from A to B, in the same direction as a uniform electric field. Determine if the particle will gain, lose, or have no change in electric potential energy and gravitational potential energy as it moves from A to B. Explain. There's also a part B and C, but uh, we'll get there when we get there. So let's just go ahead and start with part A. So as you can see, I have my uh, problem written down over here. Uh, so we basically have a particle that has a charge and a mass. Now, the particle has a mass, which means that it is affected by gravity, and it has a charge, which means that it is affected, affected I'm sorry, by the presence of an electric field. Now, um, for the first part, we're only concerned about the particle moving from A to B. So that is just part A. So we start over here and then the particle moves east towards B and then it stops here and basically they want to ask so let's just write that down so I move from point A to point B and they are asking uh, what happens to what happens to delta P electric and what happens to potential energy gravitational does it go up, does it go down, or does it stay the same? So now let's just go ahead and start with the gravitational field. So for the gravitational field, we do know that our equation for gravitational field is uh, mgh, right? So for just from physics 7a, So our change is mg delta h. Now in this case, this quantity is not going to change because if you remember from physics 7b, uh, 7a, I'm sorry, this is a side wheel, and we have this. If we have a ball here and here, ball a and ball b. Gravity is pointing downwards over here, so there is a gravitational field. But uh, both of them are going to have the same gravitational potential energy because they are at the same height. So both of these are the exact same height, you just move them horizontally, but then this force is vertical. So because you just move it perpendicular to the gravitational um, vector field, that perpendicular move is not going to cause any difference in potential energy. So if we wanted a difference in potential energy, then we must have moved it uh, up or down or maybe a little bit you know, to the side or whatever, but if the move is perfectly horizontal, meaning you're still at the same height in terms of physics 7a, which is what we remember, then there is not going to be any change in your gravitational potential energy because it's a, a perfectly, you know, perpendicular move to gravity or it's a horizontal move just in terms of this ground that we always have to define with potential energy. So, oh, I'm sorry, using the argument uh, that the... Um, that from A to B were at the same height, then uh, 
Now, if this were 7a, then my answer would be that there was no change in height. And, you know, on this quiz, I bet that was completely acceptable. But I'm going to refine my answer. And instead of saying the same height, I'm going to say that because the movement is perpendicular to the gravitational field. We are now using vectors and we know that gravity is a field. So I think that this is a more appropriate answer for 7c. It's more uh, sophisticated for 7c. But again, if you use the same height argument, that's perfectly fine. It's, it's exactly the same argument. Now, in terms of the electric potential energy, um, the electric potential energy as defined by, um, you know, in terms of the electric field, which is what we have, is E is equal to a derivative, negative derivative of dV over dr. And in this case, E is constant, which means that this derivative, because E is constant, we can just say that um, E is equal to negative delta V delta R like this. So we have E, what well, we really want is to solve for B, so I'm just gonna solve for it. So delta V is equal to negative E um, times change in R, so a change in distance, like this. And then all I would have to do, well, at this point I have enough that I can figure out whether it went up or down because this is negative, then this number over here is, um, positive and then distances are positive so I know that my answer is going to be negative if I if I do my signs but part c of the problem is actually asking me to calculate the number so I'm just going to go ahead and just calculate the actual number so delta v is equal to negative e which is 10 times travel distance Travel distance is positive because it's in the same direction as E. That's how I know that my distance was positive, by the way. Um, and this is R, so it's 0 0.2. Oh no, this is the strength of the gravitational field. Where is the strength of the... Oh, the electric field. Let me go back to the instructions. Oh, okay, the electric field has a strength of 15. Yeah, so this number is actually 15. Remember, we're using E, and then th this is G. Yeah, so I forgot to write this down. That's on me. But this was given on the problem. So we have this, and then if I multiply it, so let's see, negative... 15 times 0 0.2, negative 3. So we have negative 3 volts. And now how does this relate to my potential energy? Well, a change in potential energy is equal to Q times a change in, um, oh, I'm sorry. Change in B. So Q is negative 5. Delta V is negative 3. So delta P is positive 15 joules. So final answer is that uh, delta P E electric is equal to positive 15 joules which means that we went, um, potential energy goes up from A to B, final answer. So this is my final answer to part A, that this one goes up and then this one uh, is equal to zero. So nothing happens here. This one doesn't change and then this one goes up. So now part B of the problem is saying, okay, so do that again, but now do it from B to C. So now go from point B to point C, 
and then the question is exactly the same. Now, when we go from B to C, uh, then we can use the exact same perpendicular argument that we use for the gravitational force, except now we're going to use it for our electric force, uh, uh, our electric field, I'm sorry. So delta P E is equal to zero because movement, if you go from B to C, is perpendicular. to the electric field. Now, obviously this is going to be easier to visualize if you have a gravitational field because we have been using gravitational fields since physics since physics 7a and it's just very visual to not have a change in height as we call it on physics 7a. But in reality what's happening is that if you don't have a change in height, what you're saying is that your movement was perpendicular to the field. And that is going to work out exactly the same in physics 7c with electric fields. Um, you're not going to have a change in potential electrical energy if you're just moving perpendicular um, to E. Just sort of like by the way that they're defined honestly i don't have a reason except that the universe likes it to be that way i, I wish i had a better answer but it, that's just the way it works um but yeah so the movement in this case is perpendicular to the e field just as it was perpendicular to the gravitational field on part a so the electric uh change is going to be zero it stays the same and the only thing that we have to figure out is a change in our um gravitational potential energy, which in this case, we are going to have a change in gravitational potential energy because the movement is now parallel to this vector over here. So let's see. So change in potential energy graph, as, if, as remember from physics 7a, is mg delta h. So mass is equal to 3 g is equal to 10 and then delta h we actually moved downwards um yeah so we actually moved downwards which means that this uh, we lost some height so we lost some height that would be negative 0 0.15 now, I don't necessarily love the way that this quiz worked because I would usually say, now I would usually say that because this uh, movement is on the same direction as G, then this distance is positive. But then what's happening over here in this problem? They're using the 7a notation. What is the physics 7a notation? They like their gravity to be positive. I hate that. I really do because Positive G, to me, it feels like gravity is going upwards because positive. But on 7a, where vectors don't even exist at that point, we like using positive. And then if the changing height is, if the height goes up, then this is plus. And if the height, if you lost height, then this is minus, which is the way that I'm doing this, right? Personally, I like the physics 7b notation, which in physics 7b, where we have vectors, Gravity is a vector at this point, and because gravity is a vector that's pointing down, then g is usually negative 10. And this is something that if you go back to your notes on physics 7b, as soon as we start doing vectors, gravity is negative 10 because gravity points down. But again, uh, at the end of the day, they are just doing it this way because they know that you remember physics 7a and that you're going to use this physics 7a equation and whatnot. So just be mindful that um, because gravity here is positive, the changing height would be, um, you know, negative because it, it we went down in height, as we would say in physics uh, 7a. Uh, so anyways, if you multiply these numbers, we get... Um, 3 times 10 times negative 0 0.15, negative 
final answer. And because it's negative, oh, and this should have been electric, right? From beta C, final answer. And then part C was basically calculating these numbers, which I already calculated. So the actual numbers are the answer to part C. This is the answer to part A and B. And now our problem is complete. So if you guys have any questions about this, please make sure to leave them in the comments. And I will see you guys on the uh, next video.